What's up Cyber Hornets? Welcome back to the Cypher Hive. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make your own live Bitcoin dashboard with the live price, statistics, all sorts of other cool stuff. All you're going to need is a screen like this and a Raspberry Pi. Here I have a Raspberry Pi Zero. It's one of the cheapest ones. It's super small and portable. So you, this whole setup you can do for less than a hundred bucks. You're going to turn this into this. Waking up, I check the price of Bitcoin. Scrolling on down through the shit coins. Hot damn, I'm up 20 bands. Blessings once again, like ooh, 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 ooh. My account's at an all time high. When big boats are, make bearers die. Eat milky bars, so the price is gonna fly away. Today, today. If you guys want, you can get a kit like this, which comes with the Raspberry Pi Zero W. Also comes with a handy little case and a bunch of adapters and all the stuff you'll need. And you can usually find this for less than $30, all included, which is actually a pretty good deal. I'll leave links in the description below. All right, guys, here's all the parts that you're gonna need. Most of this will come with the Raspberry Pi kit. So obviously you're gonna need some sort of Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is the Raspberry Pi Zero W, which stands for wireless, so it operates off of your Wi-Fi. What's nice about this Raspberry Pi, it's super small, and it's super cheap, um, super portable. This screen here is a 1024 by 600 uh, LCD screen. What comes with the kits usually are the heat sink here. So let's go ahead and install that. And you're just going to want to stick this right here. That'll help dissipate the heat that it generates. All right, so now we got the heat sink installed on the Raspberry Pi. Now the only other things you're gonna need, obviously, is a power cable. If I zoom in here, I can show you guys. This has two micro USB ports here on the right, and you can see the words say USB on the left and power in on the right. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you only connect the power into this right uh, micro USB port and any other device goes in this left one. So speaking of the micro USB to USB, so this one's gonna go in the left one like so. There we go. And this is where you're gonna plug in a keyboard or a mouse uh, so that you can type or manipulate the screen. And for me, I actually have one of these. You don't need it, but this comes with a touchpad, so that acts as your mouse. Keyboard's here. It's pretty nifty. It's completely wireless. So if you open up the back, it's got a, um, a wireless USB dongle here. And I'm just going to go ahead and plug that in here. And that will allow me to use this completely wirelessly, which is pretty neat. The last thing you're going to need is a... HDMI to micro HDMI adapter, which comes in the kit. And that goes right here, and that's gonna be used to connect the screen. You're gonna plug this in here, the other end into there, and that will essentially uh, display the data right there on the screen. So I'm gonna unplug that for now because the next step you're gonna to wanna to do is to take your micro SD card you will need a micro SD card. Um, I have a 32 gigabyte Samsung here with the adapter. You're going to want to take this out. Plug this in here. And stick this into your computer and load the Raspbian uh, operating system on here. All right, guys, welcome to the Cypher Hive. If you want to follow along, I created a really easy tutorial at cypherhive.com. Let's go to guides. And then down here, you'll see how to build your own personal Bitcoin dashboard. And it'll be in three parts. So we'll click this one. All right, so here's how to build a Bitcoin dashboard for $100. And it will show you uh, all the parts you will need links to them and we are here step one pre-configure and set up your raspberry pi 
So I've got the link right here to download and launch the Raspberry Pi Imager on your computer. If you want to go there yourself, it's raspberrypi.org slash software. And you're going to download it for whatever machine you're using. I'm using Windows. So go ahead and hit download. Okay, so you're going to install Raspberry Pi Imager and then run it. Perfect. If you go back to my tutorial, reconfigure OS right here. So first thing we're going to do is choose OS and click Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit. Next thing we're going to do is do Control-Shift-X, and this will take us to the advanced options. And we're pretty much going to check everything here. And I'll show you why we're going to do that here in a second. So let's set the host name first. This is how you will navigate to your Raspberry Pi and remote into it. So default is raspberrypi.local. But I like to make it a little bit shorter. rpi0.local. You can name it whatever you want. We'll enable SSH which will allow you to remote control your Raspberry Pi from your laptop or your computer. You're going to want to set the password. Perfect. Next, you're going to want to configure your Wi-Fi. Now, if you have a Raspberry Pi Zero, like I do, it is not 5G capable. You're going to have to make sure that you just use the non-5G network. So I have a non-5G network. It's already set there. Make sure your Wi-Fi country is set up. Perfect. You're going to set your time zone. Keyboard layout. We'll click skip first run wizard. And we'll press save. So basically what this will do is it pre-configures your Raspberry Pi. So it, as soon as you plug it in, it will connect to this Wi-Fi network. Make sure the Wi-Fi and password is correct. And it will allow you to connect and log in from a completely different computer using this password and this host name. So this is super helpful if you don't have a keyboard or mouse uh, combo that you want to use to control your Raspberry Pi directly. You can completely from your computer. So now we're going to choose our storage. Click the SD card and click right. It will say, hey, all existing data is going to be erased. Do you want to continue? Yep. And we'll let it write. This menu might come up. Just exit out of it. There we go. And we'll come back when it's done. All right. If you get an error like this, just exit out of it. There we go. Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit has been written to your SD card. You can now remove it from the reader. Perfect. We're going to go go ahead and do that and follow the next steps. As you can see, I, I did uh, lots of pictures here. So you can follow along on the website as well. So make sure to check it out. Cypherhive.com slash Bitcoin dashboard. All right. We got the screen plugged in. I got the Raspberry Pi operating system installed. So we're going to take this out, plug this in here, and let's install the case. And I did put some Velcro on the back of this and on the back of that. I'll show you how it looks when I'm done. So let's stick this in and boom, here the click. Ports look good. Put the case top on and let's start plugging things in. So I'll plug in the USB adapter for the wireless keyboard. We're going to plug in the micro HDMI or mini HDMI. I'm going to plug that in here. And we're going to plug that into the screen. Let's go ahead and do that. 
the least, we're going to plug in the power cable. There we go. That's plugged in. I'll attach this to the back where I put some more Velcro. Make it nice and neat. Oh, there goes my HDMI. There we go. And All right, guys, now we're going to go into step number two, which you can find here on the guides page, and that will be to remote into your Raspberry Pi. So here's detailed instructions here if you want to follow along here. The first thing you're going to want to do is open up a command prompt for a terminal, SSH, and put in pi at the host name that you set earlier. So remember, mine was rpi0 dot local and then press enter so this will connect to your raspberry pi remember you have to be on the same wi-fi network um, you can be on the 5g if you have a similar non-5g network and you'll get this message here are you sure you want to connect say yes type in yes press enter permanently added and then It'll ask you for the password. So remember, this is the password you set for your Raspberry Pi. I'll type it in now. Don't worry, it's not gonna show up there. That's a security feature. So as you type, it'll just stay blank. Once you're done, you press enter. And here we go. Now we're logged in to pi at our pi zero. You'll, yours will say pi at whatever host name you set with a dollar sign. Now we are remotely connected to the Raspberry Pi through the terminal. So you could do all sorts of cool things here, LS to see all your folders, and you can manipulate it just like you would your normal computer with CMD. But what we're gonna do is type in raspi-config, sorry, sudo raspi-config. We're going to go to interface options. And we're going to go down to VNC. So this will allow us to connect remotely to the desktop, to make it a lot easier uh, than working with the terminal. So it says, would you like the VNC server to be enabled? Say yes. There we go. The VNC server is enabled. Perfect. So now we can scroll down, press right, go to finish. All right, now you can safely exit out of here. And what we're going to do is go to VNC Viewer, type in VNC Viewer in a browser. And we're going to go here, download VNC Viewer, select your operating system, download VNC Viewer, save it. All right. When you open VNC Viewer, you'll have a blank screen right here. It should say there are no computers connected. So to connect your first one, you can go to File, New Connection, or press Control N. And here you're going to put the host name or the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. But we set an easy host name. We'll just use that, rpi0.local. We can call this whatever we want. I'll call it Bitcoin Dashboard. Okay, and here it is, and double click that. And now it's going to attempt to connect to the Raspberry Pi. Hit continue. So username, put Pi, and then type in the password that you set. And hit okay. And there we are. Now we are connected, remotely connected to the Raspberry Pi. And now we can manipulate it without connecting a keyboard or mouse. We can do it through any computer or laptop.
All right, we're on the final step, step number three. Let's get into it. And in this step, we're going to configure the Raspberry Pi and install the Bitcoin dashboard. So the first thing we're going to want to do is check the resolution of the Raspberry Pi and make sure it matches the resolution of our screen. So let's go ahead and go to our remote workstation here. And I'm just going to maximize this to make it a little bit easier. And we're going to go up to the Raspberry Pi symbol, go to Preferences. And you might have to scroll down. There's a scroll bar on the right. You can grab that and go to Raspberry Pi Configuration. Now, what we're going to do here is check the resolution. Scroll back up a little bit. Click the Display tab, Set Resolution. And it says Default. but as you can see, as we scroll down, we're looking for 1024 by 600, which is the resolution of our screen. And the closest thing they have is 1024 by 768. That's not what we want. We want to get the actual resolution. So in order to do that, we're just going to manually uh, make that happen by changing the configuration file. So we're going to go up here, click the terminal button which will open up a terminal window. So what we're going to do is type sudo nano slash boot forward slash config dot txt. And this will open the configuration file for the Raspberry Pi. So we're going to scroll down. Oh, let me just grab this bar. There we go. And go down until you see HDMI force hot plug equals one. So go to the end of it and press enter to create a new line. And we're going to minimize this workstation. Go back to the CypherHive website because here, this is everything we just did. Here, we just add this line. And what's cool is we can just highlight it, copy it, go back into our workstation, and right mouse click and click paste. And look at that. We didn't even have to type all of that in. Just automatically put it in for us. So we'll do that. And then here where it says HDMI group one, we're going to delete the hashtag. And we're going to change this to 2. And mode will be 87. Delete the hashtag. Go down here where it says HDMI drive. Make sure it says equals 2. And make sure the hashtag is deleted. And that's it. Now all we have to do is press Control X. It'll ask us if we want to save the file. Click Y. And then press Enter. All right, now we just type in sudo reboot now. Now this will reboot the Raspberry Pi with the new configuration and uh, the new resolution. So in order to make the resolution appear accurate, you're also going to have to close out of uh, your remote workstation window. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And while we wait for it to reboot, We'll scroll down to the next section. But as you can see here, I've got the picture and everything, uh, all the pictures to follow along. And the next step is going to be to update your Raspberry Pi. So in preparation for that, we're going to just copy this command here. And once the Raspberry Pi is done booting, you're going to want to log back into it. All right, you're going to put in your password again to get back into your Raspberry Pi desktop. Here we go. And check it out. Now we can maximize it and you will notice there's there's no scroll bar on the right. So everything looks good. We'll just go ahead and double check real quick. The resolution, display, set resolution. 
Look at that, 1024 by 600. Perfect. Everything looks amazing now. It looks accurate. Um, so that's great. So now we're going to update the Raspberry Pi. Just make sure all the programs are up to date. And that way there's no security vulnerabilities on your Raspberry Pi. So open up the ter terminal window. Right mouse click. Click paste. Oh, it didn't do it. Let's go back. Let's copy. And paste. There it is. Now this process will take about uh, 30 minutes or so while it downloads and updates every every package on the Raspberry Pi. So we're going to go ahead and skip this part and come back to when it's all updated. All right, looks like the updates are complete, which is great. Now all we have to do is install a couple of dependencies and then the program. So here's the first one. We're going to install the Xterm dependency, which allows the screensaver on the screen to be suppressed. So we'll paste that there. Press Enter. That will install Xterm. It says, do you want to continue? Click Y and Enter. All right, now we're on to installing the second dependency, which is the pillow dependency. So we'll copy this. Paste. Hit enter. We'll wait till this is done installing. OK, pillow's been successfully installed. Last but not least, we install the BTC dashboard program. So here's the command git clone, and it pulls it straight from GitHub. We'll paste that in. Press Enter. And if you want to read the source code, it's right here, github.com slash chuck and bits, which is my username, slash BTC dashboard. I actually coded the program. It's completely open source. You can look at the code, review it yourself. All right, now that that's done, we can close out of the terminal. And if we go into the full file manager, you'll be able to see that here's the folder called BTC dashboard. These are the files that it pulled from GitHub. Now, I created this launcher script, which disables the screensaver and runs the Python script of BTC dashboard. So we're going to go and click properties, go to permissions, and where it says execute, change it to anyone, press OK. And just to make it a little bit easier to execute, we'll copy this and paste it right here on the desktop. So whenever you want to run the dashboard, you could just come here and double click and execute in terminal. And let's see if it works. There we go, it turned the screensaver off. And we should see a splash screen coming up. And look, it even detects the screen dimensions, 1024 by 600. All right, guys, welcome to the Bitcoin dashboard. As you can see, we've got tons of cool indicators here that give you a lot of data. First is the price. As you can see, it's green. That means the price just went up from its previous value. When it turns white like this, it means it's, it stayed the same on the following update. Um, next indicator is the sats per dollar. So you can get almost 2,800 sats per US dollar right now. We got the 24 hour change. Bitcoin's up three over 3% in the last 24 hours. Bitcoin's dominance in the whole crypto market is about 45%. How many Bitcoins are circulating? Currently 18.7 million. Remember there's only 21 million that will ever be created. And we got the market cap, and this is green because uh, the market cap went up by 2%, so this will stay green as long as that's true. It'll turn red if it goes down by 2% in 24 hours. Next, we have mempool data. This shows a lot of cool things like the current block height, 
and the time since the last block was found. So it's been almost 16 minutes. Uh, how many transactions are in the mempool? When this decreases, I believe by like 5%, it'll turn green, showing that maybe is now a good time to get your transaction in when there's less transactions in the mempool, less competition. Next, we have our average fee over 24 hours, just about $10. Current fee, the up arrow means it's a high priority. This up and down arrow is a medium priority transaction, and the down arrow is a low priority transaction. Current hash rate over 24 hours, 83 exahashes per second. Difficulty adjustment. Next, we have more data. The highest the price has been in the past 24 hours, the lowest it's been in the past 24 current all-time high. When this gets broken, so if you have this dashboard running on the day of the all-time high, it'll actually turn green. And if it's increasing in real time, you'll see a, you'll see an up arrow here as well, which is pretty awesome. The percent difference from where we are to the all-time high, we're down about 45%. And the last all-time high date, was April 14, 2021. Fear and greed index shows fear, which means it's probably a good time to buy. Here's the value, 28. A couple of cool statistics down here is the number of lightning nodes. These are the current number of public nodes. It does not include private nodes. And then the public network capacity is about 1,650 Bitcoin. Right below that, if any errors will show in purple. And the associated indicators will also turn purple, letting you know that that uh, data is not up to date. Currently, there's no errors, so nothing is popping up here. And finally, it will show you the exact time of the last update. As you can see here, it updates every few seconds. One more thing about the price is when the price goes up or down by 2% in an hour, you'll have a trend indicator show up here pointing up or down depending on the direction of the market. So that's pretty sweet as well. Finally, if you want to view the terminal, you can hit Alt tab and this will show you exactly what's being updated in real time. Every time the price gets updated, it will print the price here and then it will show you uh, which data it's pulling. So that's pretty cool to see. So we're gonna exit, do that. And finally, if you want to exit out of the dashboard, you will hit the um, Bitcoin logo here. So I hope you guys enjoy this dashboard. I love it. I have it in my living room. I look, when I walk by, I can see any anything I, I want. I don't have to pull out my phone or anything. It's really helpful. It's really awesome. I just have it running 24 seven. It hardly uses any power. It's a really, really cool tool. So we're going to exit out of this real quick. One last thing I want to show you is how to update it. Every once in a while, I'll release new updates. It might have new indicators, performance updates. So in order to make sure you have the latest version, you're going to type in CD BTC dash dashboard. This will put you in the Bitcoin dashboard directory. And then you'll type in git pull. And this will check if there's any updates. And it says here, one file has changed and it updated it. So now it's fully updated and there you go. So every once in a while, if, you know, consider updating it or check the GitHub and see, see if there's anything new. So I hope you guys like this dashboard. And if you did, Make sure to come down here. Um, I've got the link to the source code on GitHub. So if you click this link, you'll open a new tab. Here's the code. You can look at it yourself. And if you want to make any contributions, feel free. Finally, if you got value from this guide, head over to our support page. You can click support up here. We got donation links and referral links from products that we use all the time. Lots of cool ones here. And uh, even if you go shopping on Amazon, it's our affiliate link, it'll help us out. So thank you very much and make sure to check out the guides.
All right, so now you guys know how to make your own live Bitcoin dashboard that you can put anywhere you want in the house. Put it on your desk, stick it on the wall, put it next to your bed or above your ceiling so you can constantly watch the Bitcoin price and statistics. <laughs> Whatever you guys wanna do. Don't drive yourself too crazy though. But we're just getting started here guys, so make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any cool content and smash that like button if you guys enjoyed the, this video and we'll see you guys next time. Have a good day. Okay, you got your suicide stack all in Bitcoin. I don't need no cash. Fuck cock bucks, they suck. I don't want a pay stub. You can keep the cash. I'ma stack until that day come. Lambo, moonshot. I believe since day one. If you don't know me, this is wrong. Hands only have fun. Staying poor if you could bitch you lay, homie. I could never do that.